We are back from lunch. And I will turn to the computer. Okay, welcome back, everyone. Our first item today is a first read. And this is um, a required first read under the bylaws because it is for a proposed bylaw change. And so this is a recommendation from the Washington Young Lawyers Committee. Um, and I believe we have uh, Chair Zachary Davison to present. No, we do not. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm here. Oh, Mason Key is going to present. All right, Mason, go ahead. Thank you, uh, and, and good afternoon, governors. Uh, my name is Zach Davison. Um, and I'm, I'm joined today by my colleague and co, uh, co committee member Mason G. Um, and we are both members of, of what's currently known as the Washington Young Lawyers Committee. Um, we appreciate you taking the time uh, to meet with us and consider our proposal to amend uh, the bylaws and revise the definition of what it means to be a new and young lawyer in Washington state. I have a few opening remarks and then I'll hand this over to my colleague Mason, um, who has a PowerPoint presentation um, and we'll walk you through some of the key aspects of our proposal. Um, but before we do that, I wanted to quickly touch on some of some of the background to this project, um, because I think it provides important context um, as you consider some of these some of these aspects. This project began in 2019 uh, when news began to circulate that other jurisdictions around the country uh, were in the process of changing or had already changed their definition or their various iterations of new and young lawyer. And through a series of meetings and discussions, our committee put together a plan to determine, A, whether Washington has a similar need, B, whether our constituents supported a potential change to Washington's definition of new and young lawyer, and then C, put together a course of action. Um, and through extensive deliberations, back gathering, and returns to the drawing board, uh, our committee came up with the proposal that you have in front of you today. Um, we're proud of this proposal, um, and we believe that it pre presents an opportunity to have a positive impact on more people who are entering our profession and becoming members of the Washington State Bar Association for the first time. Uh, so with that, I'll hand it over to my colleague, Ms. Mason G. Thank you. Thank you, Zach. Um, Rex, I believe I sent the PowerPoint slide deck to you just a little bit ago. That's it, perfect. We could do uh, full screen, that would be great. Um, and before I begin, I wanted to thank um, and recognize our WSBA support staff, uh, Shell and Curtis, as well as the brains behind this project from the very beginning, Julianne, um, who is here today, I believe, uh, with us. Um, so I'll dive right in here. So let's go to the next slide. And the proposed changes uh, pertain to Articles 6, 11, and 12 of uh, the WILC's bylaws. And here we have um, the definition. I wanted to kind of zoom in here on Section 12 because this kind of encapsulates the changes that uh, we wish to make or are proposing to make. Um, and these materials are provided uh, for you, I think on page, starting on page 98. So if you would like to follow along, uh, please feel free to do so. We have a memo that describes all of the uh, proposed amendments and the surveys. So here, there are two big uh, changes, overarching changes that we're looking at. Um, the first of which is to remove the age restriction from the current definition. Um, and the second of which is to expand uh, the limit on practicing time from five years to uh, 10 years. Those are the two, at the broad level, uh, changes that we are proposing here. Next slide, please. As Zach described a little bit earlier, we have um, this, this, the progenesis of this project started in 2019 uh, with the ABA's vote to change the definition of young lawyer. Um, and we actually received uh, unsolicited outreach from constituents on the margins. They're asking us whether or not uh, the WILC will be making some similar changes. And that's kind of where this entire uh, project started. Um, WILC examined the 
other jurisdictions' definitions of young lawyers, including the neighboring jurisdiction of Oregon. And we also looked at um, other bar associations within Washington, specifically uh, King County Bar Association, uh, which recently changed its young lawyers division, the name of the young lawyers division into a new lawyers division to be more inclusive of, uh, of uh, lawyers who would otherwise have not been under that definition. Next slide, please. And so through a, a series of uh, community input surveys, uh, we were able to collect data on what the constituents of WYLC are thinking about in terms of uh, these proposed changes. And I've uh, put a couple of different uh, questions that I think are representative of uh, the types of answers that we were looking for. And so the proposed changes are based off of uh, the answers and the percentages of uh, survey uh, recipients and those who have uh, given us feedback on the survey uh, on these various questions. This table, is included in the memo uh, starting on page 98 of your materials. Next slide, please. Here's an additional question that is also pertinent. Uh, we asked specifically about the years of practice. And if you will see here, uh, out of all the different choices, the 10 year uh, response, the, the increase of the Years of practice of 10 years received the most percentages out of all of these different types of options, which is why uh, the proposed changes have the 10 year uh, figure in them. Next step, please. Next slide, please. I want to highlight um, a real life example of what we're talking about here. This is uh, a, a Washington young lawyer uh, named Aaron Packer, who recently won the King County Bar Association's Outstanding uh, New Lawyer Award. Um, he's actually a lawyer who uh, switched careers twice and is would not have fit under uh, WYLC's current definition uh, for a young lawyer. And so I want to point your attention specifically to the second sentence here, where he says any attorney with 10 years of experience or less is a new lawyer. And so there is support among the community, among uh, new lawyers and young lawyers, uh, at least in terms of their understanding of what these terms mean. And from a real life perspective, uh, these are the types of constituents that we would hope uh, can be encompassed under uh, the purview of WYLC. Next slide, please. I want to launch a little bit into an equity analysis, kind of balancing the equities of uh, a change versus keeping as is. Um, we have received feedback from some young lawyers who say, you know, that the, they have concern that this change defeats the purpose of what it means to be a young lawyer. But then uh, many other uh, young lawyers surveyed also said that, you know, there are other resources and programs uh, that are available to constituents um, who currently fit under the definition. These are other resources that may not be within uh, WYLC's purview. But one of the most prevailing feedbacks that we received is that there really is no downside or very little downside to offering WYLC's opportunities to a larger segment of the WSBA. Those resources are currently a little bit underutilized. And so we would actually want to encourage more people and more young lawyers, new lawyers to utilize those resources and really engage further with the WYLC. And from a practical implication, as in the case of Aaron Packer, um, new lawyers uh, might not be restricted to uh, the age of 30, 36 and below. They may have a transition later in their career. And um, having the access to WLC's resources and, and networking opportunities will really benefit those new lawyers. Um, and we believe that the triggering event for uh, becoming qualified as a new lawyer or a young lawyer under the new definition would be at a first submission to the WSBA as opposed to um, admission to another bar. Next slide, please. Continue on the uh, equity analysis here. Uh, one of the biggest areas of feedback that we received is, uh, you know, the concern that having an age restriction might be a factor in discrimination, especially for those lawyers who have transitioned into a lawyer career 
later in their in their uh, professional life. Um, and another concern that we are um, consider we had considered is whether to actually change the name of the WYLC itself to include other legal professionals like uh, legal practice uh, offices or um, LLLTs, uh, who we also surveyed um, to get these results, uh, because that definitely they would not fall uh, fall under the current or the new definition. And so, if the board is willing to consider um, a change in the name, the definition um, to include these other types of legal professionals, uh, LPOs and LL LLLTs uh, specifically, that is definitely an issue that. Uh, the WYLC is willing to explore further. Next slide, please. Um, and finally, we're looking at the fiscal analysis here. Um, just to give you a sense of some of the numbers, as of December 31st, 2022, about 6,000 lawyers admitted to the WSBA would have qualified under the definition. Under the new definition, we're looking at about uh, 12,200 lawyers um, who are barred uh, in the WSBA, um, but it's important to understand and note that uh, the WYLC does not currently foresee increasing costs or expenses. We're not asking for additional funding or expenses to cover um, uh, any other new uh, or young lawyers who might fall under a new definition. I think the, the resources as currently anticipated would be adequate. Um, what we would need is some limited staff time to incorporate the changes to the bylaws and for outreach regarding the changes. And also for um, internal policy alignments uh, required for uh, new member discounts, which may have other considerations as well. And just in short, so we, we believe that these changes are uh, important and they're, they would cover the constituents at the margins who might really need to utilize the WILC's resources and to really engage a wider uh, group of young and new lawyers uh, into uh, the WSBA's environment and resources. Um, that's it for my presentation. I welcome any questions and um, from the board. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um... All right, I'll uh, open it up for um, appeal for them. Um, all right, I'll, I'll start. Oh, 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 yeah. Hi, I have a couple of questions. One, uh, if we're eliminating an age requirement, why are we retaining the word young? Why so not just new the, lawyers. Mm. That is um, that is something that, that we're willing to consider as well. But the the fact that um, having new and young together seems to be a little bit more inclusive towards all types of new and young lawyers, including those who are um, who might actually might actually be a bit younger, but also include those um, who are later in, who transition later in the career. The focus here is to try and make these changes with as little impact to the current identity of uh, the organization as possible. So we thought that adding new on top of young can serve as a kind of transition that would make sense in terms of being uh, more inclusive in that definition. Yeah, um, one other question. The proposal says that you qualify to be a new and young lawyer for 10 years after you are first admitted in the state of Washington. This means that a partner in Kirkin, Perkins Coie's Washington, D.C. office, who's been practicing law for 41 years, comes home, gets admitted in Washington. They're 72 years old. There's, they, they can qualify for the division. That doesn't seem very smart. That is a good point. Um, and perhaps there might be room for adjusting um, that definition a bit to, in, to include and to address that type of situation. The original thinking was to extend for 10 years specifically for those types of new lawyers who, for, for example, might be international lawyers who practice for a couple of years, uh, move to Seattle, move to Washington, um, and who otherwise would not uh, be included in the definition, uh, but who still are very much new lawyers. 
Okay, I will go next to um, Shanita. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, and thank you for the excellent presentation. Um, I was in personally in a situation where when I first moved from California to Washington in 2008, um, I had been practicing in Canada before that, then California, and then um, became what might be considered a new young lawyer, even though at the time I was in my 40s. Um, I actually have the perspective that expanding the umbrella of who is within that category is a good thing. Um, I think we make a lot of presumptions about um, people who go into the practice of law being of a certain age. So I, um, I don't know. I think we do run into an issue of the word young, but in principle, I support what the proposal is about. Thank you. Thanks, Anita. Uh, okay, let's go next to um, Grant, please. Thank you. Um, you know, this is an issue that I originally thought was really just a no-brainer, but the more I've been thinking about it and thinking about what the purpose of the designation is, in my mind, is, is the new and young lawyers that are under a certain age, they share more commonalities than just the element of being new young lawyers. They're also usually first jobs. They're, they're experiencing life in you know the first time having to pay property taxes. And, and what really kind of shook me was when I saw the number that we would be jumping to of going from 6,000, which is already a real healthy number, percentage of the, of the active members of the WSBA, to over 12,000. And I'm thinking about the young lawyer committees and the groups, and um, and and now I'm I'm really contemplating whether that's going to be the best way to achieve the objective. I, I having a resource of someone who's new to Washington and being able to join the new and young lawyers, but it's kind of like when the 40 year old goes to college for the first time, you don't see them moving into the dorm or into the Greek system to be developing the relationships with 18 to 22 year olds. And so I, I really, you know, I appreciate your presentation. Um, I couldn't find the actual red line because I, looking at your memo, I, I didn't think the issue raised by Governor Fay was going to be an issue because the, the line still was saying that it would be, uh, was first admitted to practice in any state. So it would have been 10 years from any state, but I, I can't actually find the red line version of of what what you're proposing, but I, I didn't think the issue was going to be one about someone having practiced for 40 years in a different state and then coming to Washington for the first time. Um, but I I would love if anyone has that citation because apparently I'm having technological issues today, um, where you can say where the red line is in our materials. Yeah, I think I think that may have been inadvertently omitted. Um, I'm going to lean on Julianne for this one. I don't quite remember which. Um, Pages. I think there was like 150 something. Um, so should it's, have. It's, yeah, but I'm not seeing it's the one, red line. It's it's 156, but it is not red line. Ah, okay. It incorporates yeah, the changes, but, correct? But yeah. if I may, I, I'm I'm not I'm not finished. Governor, so okay, sorry. Um, so so that's something. I mean, what what are your thoughts on on I mean, on spending time? I mean, if you're involved in YWLC. You know, if all of a sudden you're there with a bunch of 48 year olds and 55 year olds who are talking about their grandkids and you're talking about making your first, you know, trying to come up with the down payment for your first home. I mean, how, how would you feel having all of a sudden that that cross generational element to the what has currently been specifically age limited? That is a that is a great question, Governor. I really appreciate you asking that question. I think it's a really important one. Um, my response would be, I think actually having um, new lawyers who are in the, in the higher, in, in, a, in a higher age rate, for example, they might bring some really important color to that discussion. Really like, how is the challenge of being a new lawyer changing 
for different types of age groups. And in my experience, at least, in, in my firm too, we have we have some associates, new associates who uh, used to be engineers and now um, decided to transition their career. I really appreciated actually hearing their perspective. You know, how is the practice of law different than what they had before? What are some lessons learned? And you know, I am one of those young lawyers who who just started out. You know, I'm making a down payment on a house, but for me at least, having that other perspective in the room is really helpful in terms of in terms of um, contextualizing the practice of law and what it means uh, to be a lawyer, especially at these uh, initial steps. And I would emphasize that uh, there, I think the WYLC resources are underutilized. And as is, having just that restrictive group of young lawyers under a certain age, we're not meeting um, the demand. There's still increasing demand outside uh, that, that we should be uh, keeping in or, or, or ushering into the resources here. And so I think that um, is a really valuable perspective, at least, you know, the cross-generational dialogue, especially for new lawyers, I think is a plus uh, because it really brings another type of perspective uh, to the practice of law. Um, Alec, next, please. Thank you, and thank you for your presentation. Um, and I think one of the reasons we do first and second read is so you can get comments back and do whatever um, adjustments you need to do uh, with those comments. So the first one is actually, I was struggling as well to actually find um, the red line version of the changes um, because what we had in here. So my, my, first, my first suggestion is one, don't, don't give us the whole set of bylaws, focus on the section that you're talking about and give us a version that shows what the change is. So just that those two sections will help, I think. Um, there, is a, there is a context that um, I, I can understand. Uh, you're wanting to use the, uh, keep the word new and young uh, lawyers. One of the things I would hope is that um, you are not, and it almost sounded like you were taking one step and then you were gonna come back in the future to take another step. Um, well, I don't know when that future would be, but hopefully it won't be for a while because that's the whole point of bylaws. You know, you don't just keep amending just because, or we're gonna do this little piece now and then we're gonna know that do a little another piece later that's disjointed in terms of what you're trying to do all together. One of the things I will note, um, because uh, having attended the University of Puget Sound Law School way back in the day, there were some of my colleagues who uh, I was uh, in my mid-20s, there were some colleagues who were in their 40s, and they were under a strange kind of discrimination, where some some professors even challenged why they were there because they were too old and what would they do with it and that may also be a case for um a number of people again in our profession looking at this 50 year old person who just graduated law school and is now having to deal with why should i hire you how long are you going to be around so there may be reasons you know, while, yes, they might talk about their grandchildren, they may also talk about the kind of age discrimination that they're that they're facing uh, because they're not the usual 20 something or 30 something that comes out of law school. So um, good luck. I do hope you will make uh, some changes and some revisions uh, for your second read. Thank you so much. We'll definitely circle back with the rest of the committee about the, the question about the new and young lawyers and to see if um, uh, we can agree on a different wording for that. Thank you. Um, thank, you. thank you. Let's go to uh, um, Nam um, uh, next, please. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'm trying, I'm looking at the definition for the new young and lawyer section, and this is, this doesn't, 
something else because my understanding for the new young lawyer section was um, group was that it's for the purpose of a group of people entering the profession, helping each other, talking to each other about the problem they face. And I don't have the issue with the 36 year, 36 year getting rid of that. My question is from five to 10 years is pretty extensive because under five, you're usually entering the profession. You're either starting out on your own, a junior associate, five, five to 10, you're at least a senior associate general counsel, maybe counsel, or you left the firm or go to counsel, you're managing, or it's a completely different perspective. Some people become partner within 10 years. Most people don't become partner before five. So uh, aren't you kind of diluting the camaraderie, the, the common ground of the section? I, I, and I always thought that was the purpose of the, of the young lawyers. Thank you, Governor. That's, a, that's an extremely good question. Um, there are two parts to my answer to that question. The first of which is that 10 year number is based off of our survey data. The plurality of results indicated that they preferred it to be going up until 10 years uh, from five years. And also from anecdotal and feedback that we received, for example, from uh, the uh, Aaron Packer's uh, post that we just examined earlier, um, that's kind of an understanding that people have about uh, new lawyers is, you know, within the 10 year range, you're still learning what it's like to be a lawyer. And that goes into my second part of the answer, which is, um, you know, at the five to 10 year mark, you are more senior. I, I totally agree with that. But at that time, you're still honing your craft and you have, um, you have that kind of experience that you can give to lawyers who are a little bit more junior maybe within the one to five year range, we really want to hear about what it's like uh, to be a little bit more of a senior associate type role, to be a little bit more of like a junior partner type role. What are their lessons learned? And at least in my experience, having that kind of mentorship within that age range without having to jump and, and create these hierarchies has been really, really helpful. For example, Zach is a little bit more senior in his practice and I have benefited a ton from his mentorship. And you know, if he hadn't been as involved in WYLC, I probably wouldn't have had that type of experience where I could really um, kind of learn about what types of issues he ran into early in his practice and a little bit later into his practice and trying to avoid some of those um, pitfalls if I can. And so I think having that type of, um, from the zero to 10 year range uh, really gives a wide range of experiences that would still qualify as a young lawyer, and you're still developing your practice, still honing your, your skills as a lawyer, that I think is, is valuable. Creating that, 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 that spectrum of new lawyers and young lawyers, I think would be really helpful for, especially uh, those lawyers who are just starting out. Okay, um, we, oh, we have 10 minutes left, so let's try to, uh, uh, I'm shorter with, with our, our time. If we, Okay, so next to um, Todd, please. Thank you. Thank you, President Clark. And uh, thank you for the presentation. I just wanted to uh, briefly, uh, I think probably echo a couple of the comments and, and, and therefore kind of hopefully reinforce them. I, I certainly kind of identify with uh, incoming president-elect uh, Andrew Val's uh, experience having practiced in another other ju jurisdiction prior to being admitted in Washington. In fact, as of time now, uh, I, I would be, uh, where the reference to uh, any state uh, would be considered a, a new law lawyer, and uh, uh, I've been admitted for some time as well. And I, I think that your your points are are salient in certain in certain respects. And and again, echoing uh, the comments of of, of Governor Wynn uh, with regards to the kind of the seniority and and the face issues that you face as a as a practitioner uh from one state to another may not be that that distinct uh where you've gathered some uh some experience and may and and so i i get the point that within the 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 division there may be some differences and different levels of of uh of experience and sophistication in, in the craft uh, the the profession uh and that that may be helpful and and uh instructive uh, but somebody who's new to uh, an, the area or to the bar specifically, 
may have some needs or some, you know, uh, wish to avail themselves of some of the resource themselves instead of kind of being the person who gets to be the mentor uh, and kind of giving advice taking, if you will, so to speak, um, in, in that regard. So, uh, and, and I briefly echo uh, the comment in the chat from uh, Mr. McPherson uh, about, you know, perhaps limiting to 10 years in any jurisdiction uh, or you could have it couched maybe within five years within uh, WISBA, Washington State Bar Association, or 10 years in, in any uh, jurisdiction. And, and the other thing I would note is that although clearly there are examples of, of folks who are uh, significantly senior in age to the, uh, to the current standard, um, you know, the Age Discrimination Act takes effect for individuals who are age 40 or, or above. Um, and so it seems like, you know, having some kind of upper limit to be considered, you know, young in that regard, you know, you could be a member of the elder law section in the young lawyers division at the same time, you know, and so it, it not to, to minimize and certainly, you know, to a certain extent, perhaps I, I may have felt like I experienced some of these same uh, pressures uh, of being, you know, a student at, at a, a little bit more uh, senior age to some of my class classmates uh, or, or things of that nature or in a, in a firm or in a profession. And, and kind of being that fish out of water. And so there are some kind of isolation uh, and some different factors that play in there that I think that, that I, I certainly I'm sensitive to, but I think maybe having some, some other kind of guardrails around it that are not quite so wide open, you know, maybe 10 years in any jurisdiction or five years within the state of Washington and maybe age 40 or something of that nature, you know, which would open it up to a much bigger group perhaps to, to be able to avail themselves of those benefits and, and the, the, the purposes of the division, uh, but not so wide that it just, you know, is almost meaningless because here, you know, when we think about 40,000 uh, uh, lawyers, you know, we would expand it from, you know, 20, less than 20% to, you know, over a quarter of, of potentially practicing lawyers, in which case, if it, if it's, it potentially loses its meaning. Uh, so thank you, and I'll, I'll close there. Thank you very much. Okay, let's go to um, um, okay to um, uh, um, uh, 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 next, please. Yep. Thank you. Um, I can. I just would like to make a comment more than anything. Uh, back in 2010, I was the president of the Young Lawyers Division, and this is something that was researched a lot even back then, <laughs> and it was intensely researched and commented on by affiliates throughout even the ABA YLD in terms of what their um, requirements were to be a newer young lawyer. And I know that the Young Lawyers Committee that the division became has looked into this quite intensely, especially over the last few years. And I can say that what they are requesting is in line with not just what other young lawyer divisions and sections, including what we have in Snohomish County have, but throughout the entire nation of ABA affiliates have a 10 year requirement for most of the affiliates um, as it currently stands right now. And so I really don't feel that based on the research the Young Lawyers Committee has done now that if this is what they would like, why we should not approve it whenever the final vote comes up um, because it will affect the new and young lawyers. And they've done the research and have provided us with the details that otherwise the majority of us don't readily have available to us. So that, I just wanna make those comments. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, Mr. I'm going to have a second. Thank you, governors. Uh, I just wanted to chime in here since I was involved, as Mason mentioned, from the beginning of this project back in 2019. And I think there might be some points of clarification that could be helpful. One, this proposal it, to the bylaws definition really has three main impact points. And I wanna make that clear. One is, uh, Kari mentioned the Young Lawyers Division and I've heard the division thrown out and that is no longer in existence. That was dissolved in 2012. And so right now what we have is a Washington Young Lawyers Committee, which is comprised of about 18 members, very similar to the Board of Governors, but there's no Young Lawyers section or division. 
So by changing, well, the current bylaw definition or changing the bylaw definition, the impacts that it have are on three things. One is the at-large young lawyer governor position. So it would change the name and the eligibility of those who could volunteer and apply for that position. The second would be, you know, changing the name of the Washington Young Lawyers Committee or anywhere where we use the term young lawyer to be new and young or whatever the proposal ends up being at the end. And then the third is kind of and who would be eligible to serve on the Washington Young Lawyers Committee or as the young lawyer liaison to a section. So those are kind of the three main impact areas here. Uh, and it was mentioned in the fiscal analysis in the memo starting on page 98 that operationally, we already provide new member discounts that does differ a little bit from the bylaws definition. Uh, so for example, if you're a new member to the Washington State Bar, and that includes triple LTs and LPOs, and you're within your first five years of admittance, age doesn't matter, to the bar, you can qualify for CLE discounts. So the benefits uh, that we provide, or particularly the discounts that we provide, aren't uh, necessarily always tied to this definition of the bylaws. The bylaws is really about kind of governance, the volunteer opportunities, and who's eligible to serve in those leadership roles. And so I don't know if that maybe clarifies a little bit more about the impact of this definition. And of course, the Board of Governors, you can discuss, you know, should all the definitions we have be in alignment and what does that look like? but hopefully that provides a little bit more clarity as to any change in the bylaws as it currently stands with, you know, even the definition. If we don't expand the reach of the definition, those are kind of the three core impact areas. Thanks so much. Uh, okay, uh, we're right on time. Uh, Alec, last words. Okay. And last words for me is um, consider just making this new lawyers a new lawyer section, because actually that's what you're really, you're really talking about. You're not talking about an age or something like that that decides young, you're actually defining what new is. Thanks, Alec. Thanks to all, all who's, uh, yeah, I mean, on and stuff. So, so thank you. Um, it's, it's on for first read today, so we'll, we'll come back. Um, um, yeah, I've heard this. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much, so much for the time.